Representative Rashida Tayyib. She became the 26th member in congressional history to be censured in part for, uh, well, in part for a tweet she made that was jumping to the conclusion that Israel bombed a hospital when in fact it was a rocket that Hamas misfired. And then she didn't really make any effort whatsoever to correct that. A clarification, and, the rocket was technically not fired by Hamas, but an allied group with Hamas. Yeah, the uh, Islamic Jihad, I think. But Yeah. Thank you for that clarification. <laughs> and and um, uh, Taib uh, released this statement uh, on October 8th, so the day after the attack, uh, kind of tellingly titled on ongoing violence in Israel and Palestine, where she says, I grieve the Palestinian and Israeli lives lost yesterday, today and every day. I am determined as ever to fight for a just future where everyone can live in peace. The path to that future must include lifting the blockade, ending the occupation, and dismantling the apartheid system that creates the suffocating, dehumanizing conditions that can lead to resistance. And her characterizing this, uh, this action as resistance was cited as a reason to censor her. Does that statement strike you as beyond the pale and worthy of censure? Uh, well, first of all, it's an offensive statement. It offends because it it implies that what happened on October 7th was justified. It was the un inevitable result of the behavior of, of Israel and how it treats the Palestinians. Uh, I don't like the use of the word apartheid. There were 2 million Arabs who live in Israel who have free health care, college, can vote, uh, it's not free totally, but it's free healthcare. But they have the same healthcare that every Israeli has. They have the same educational system as every Israeli. They have equal rights. Um, so calling this an apartheid situation, I find offensive, just as I find offensive the phrase genocide. The population in West Bank and Gaza has risen fivefold over the last, I think, five or six decades. If this is genocide, we're not very good at it. Uh, the phrase allows a comparison of Israel to the Nazis. Just I don't find that helpful or honest. Having said that, uh, I don't have any problem with that statement. Uh, I would not have censured her. I don't think it's good for the Jews <laughs> that we censured her. Um, not sure it's good for Israel. And I wanted to say one other thing. Um, Before you say that, could you tell me why you say that about why is it not good for the Jews or Israel to like, censure her? Like the idea that we're, we're so powerful, we can you know get a, a Congress. Oh, okay member of Congress censured because she said something that we don't like. I, that's the way it's easily interpreted. I, I, mm -hmm. I'm sure if there were no Jews in Congress and no Jews in America, it's possible she would have been censured either way, but I don't think it looks so yeah, good for us. Yeah, and to be clear, there were Jewish members of Congress who voted to censure her and to not censure her. So Correct. there's not really too much there substantively, but I understand Fair enough, but it's perception. Just, it does. It, it's the same reason I don't like, I don't think it's good for for Jews that we get these people fired or tear down the posters. It's like, this makes people angry at the Jews who already don't like them. We have to stand up for ourselves. I'd much rather stand up and block the poster ripper than, than to use the legal system or, or other things to, to punish them in ways they can't anticipate, which is also, I think, unjust. Um, but I, I want to say something I think is important about, about say, congressional uh, speech and um, it's a perfectly legitimate opinion to to oppose American military aid to Israel on the grounds that Israel is treats the Palestinians poorly. I don't agree with the the the, the justification, but I'm not sure American aid is always good for Israel. So strategically and in terms of making the world a better place, it, it's a complicated question. But it certainly should be protected by free speech to say that. American uh, support for Israel is wrong. Uh, that 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 is and and fundamentally, it, it would be grotesque to censure people who didn't want to stand by Israel in this particular moment and who feel that uh, the Palestinian cause has been uh, in, inaccurately presented or distorted or anything. So I, I want to be clear. I don't I don't think Israel's entitled or Jews are entitled to any special treatment in this moment because of the horrific nature or savage 
and barbaric nature of October 7th. I just think we should get the same treatment as everybody else. Um, but that in general, uh, I'm, I'm, I remain a fan of free speech, but I do think uh, exhorting people to violence might fall into a different group, different category. I do think it's also worth sort of bringing into the conversation that like censuring a member of Congress doesn't actually do anything. It is essentially yeah. a formal, a formalized means of slapping somebody on the wrist. Uh, yeah, and absolutely. And, and, and much of what we're talking about here is, is virtue signaling of various kinds that I find unhealthy for, for democracy. Um, I would much rather she get voted out of office if her constituents find her offensive or disagree with her. And that's the way a democracy should handle this. I wrote, I, the I hospital wrote. thing, the hospital thing is a little tricky because in the moment I could understand that someone would blame Israel for that bombing. You know, when the, when that story broke, it was Israel destroys hospital with 500 people dead. Turned out hospital wasn't destroyed. New York Times ran a photograph of a destroyed building. It wasn't the hospital. Uh, it turns out the parking lot of the hospital was struck. A lot of cars were burned. Uh, I don't know if anybody died, maybe a few people, which very sad, uh, but, but it probably wasn't by Israel. So in the first half hour, hour, five hours, you could maybe have leapt to the wrong conclusion. When it came pretty clear that it wasn't the case, forget who did it, forget whether Israel did it or whether it was uh, Islamic Jihad a missile that did it. Uh, it wasn't 500 people. It wasn't a hospital destroyed. Why wouldn't you fix that? And she stood up at a rally the next day and said some things are probably not true. It's embarrassing for her. Again, let her constituents put her out of office. And if they agree with her or like what she says anyway, you know, it's hard to uh, disagree. They can let them do what they do. Hey, thanks for watching that clip from our conversation with Russ Roberts about life in Israel in the aftermath of the October 7th terrorist attacks. You can watch another clip from that conversation over here or the full conversation right over here.